When I say Israel, I'm talking to you blacks and Hispanics. You are the Israelites according to the Bible. All right? It is time for you to know. All right? Stop walking around thinking you're Puerto Rican. Stop walking around thinking you're African American. Right? We are none of these things. We are God's chosen people. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with saying you're God's chosen. God has a favorite and that's us, the so-called blacks and Hispanics. And it's time you wake up to that reality. The book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 11. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. All right, knowing the time, read that again. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. You blacks and Hispanics, now is the time for you to wake out of sleep. What sleep? That sleep that you're Puerto Rican. That sleep that Hispanics are different from blacks. We are the same people, the same nation. All right, we are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. God's chosen people. He didn't create us to be subservient to the other nations. We are in this condition because we broke God's laws. Read that again. And now, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. To awake out of sleep. Just because you're on your phone walking and talking doesn't mean you're awake. You're asleep. You're consciously asleep. All right? You don't know who you are. You don't know your nationality. You don't know your heritage. You don't know that you're God's favorite people. We are God's favorites. In case you didn't know, give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. It's high time to awake out of sleep. No longer are we going to stay asleep. The prophets of the Most High are here to wake our people up. All right? And there's things going on in this world to help you wake up. You need that kickstart. You need death and destruction to wake you up. That's Why? right. Because you're not going to wake up just by, hey, did you know you're God's chosen people? You're not going to wake up that way. The Most High has to disrupt your life in order for you to wake up. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. What did the Most High say about Israel, about you so-called blacks and Hispanics? For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Holy meaning sanctified, separated from the other nations. Read on. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people. What did the Most himself. High do? The Lord thy God have chosen thee. The Most High God has chosen us. He has chosen us. That's why I say we are the chosen. The Most High has chosen us. Free. To be a special people unto himself. No, to be niggas and spicks. To be a special people unto himself. No, to be blacks and Hispanics. To be a special people unto himself. No, to be Puerto Ricans and blacks. To be a special people unto himself. The Most High God has chosen us to be a special people. Unto who? Unto himself. Unto himself. He chose us to himself. All right? He separated us from the other nations. Unto himself. Read. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. No, we're supposed to be under all people. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. No, you got that wrong, brother. We're supposed to be equal. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. All right, so when we're saying we're chosen, we're above all people. We have the right to say that. Why? Because the Most High has chosen us. He has selected us. He has divided us, separated us from the other nations. Give me that in Deuteronomy 32. You know what I said? All right. Come over here, brother. You got a question? What did you see that you got a question? What's your question? I feel that, you know, that, um, 
slavery. What about slavery? I feel that this is why I believe that the real Jesus is coming from black and not white. Because I believe that racism again started because of that. Because remember, what did the Romans want to do with the with You need to teach or you need to ask a question. No, I'm asking a question, but I'm, question? I'm actually pointing out a bringing right. out a computer. Right. Okay. This is what I do. Remember what the Romans did? Whoever used to speak about freedom and um Righteousness, they were killed in the front. That's another book to be studying. We started teaching that freedom and um, prosperity. The Romans didn't want that. So they killed them. Now, Jesus is following the skin color was black. How do you know that? He was born a slave. Watch it. He was not born a slave. No, no, remember this. Um, it was the, the process of. How do you know Jesus is black? Because, because the prophet, the prophet, um, I forgot what prophet mentioned the son of God. Give me 1 Thessalonians 5. Let me see, let me see. Remember how the prophet says that the son of God, how did people expect him to come? They expected him to come from um, high standards. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, they expected him to be a prince. You know? But since the people expected the son of God to be a prince. I'm going to stop you right there because you said you had a question and I haven't heard a question. You made a statement. You said that Christ, that you believe Christ is black. All right. Now, when you make a statement like that, that's a true statement, but you have to be able to back it up. You have to be able to prove it. I'm backing it up. I'm going to prove it to you. You got to use scriptures, brother. First Thessalonians. The book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5 and verse 21. Prove all things. What does the Bible say? Prove all things. So you have to prove when you say that Christ is black. So now I'm going to help you so that the next time you make that statement, you have proof to back it up. All right. I'm going to get to the point of view. I'm waiting for your question. I still haven't heard you. I'm going to get to the question. Now, we have been punished. We have been punished right now. Who's we? General, what general. people? All of us. All of us. Who's all of us? Man. Everybody has not been punished, brother. Wait, wait, wait. wait. No. Hold on. No, no, no. You hold on. Everybody has not been punished. All right. That's, Don't it? that's the lie I'm telling. That's the lie. There's no lies in the Bible. Hold on, hold on. The lies of the Bible. There's one lie. There's no lies in the Bible, brother. All right. That man is punished because of a sin. What yeah. sin is? That? What lie is in the Bible? You don't know. Read that again. Read it again. This brother does not understand. Read it again. First Thessalonians. Book of First Thessalonians, chapter five and verse 20, 21. Read it, brother. Prove all things. All right. The Bible says, "Prove all things." You said Christ is black. You can't prove it because you didn't bring out a scripture. You said there's a lie in the Bible. You can't prove it. You don't even know where it's at. So now I'm going to prove to you that Christ is black. So that next time you make that statement, you don't seem ignorant. Because you have to be able to prove the statement. Alright? Let's go. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. You know what revelation means? Exactly. So we're going to reveal to you the, 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 the true depiction of Jesus Christ. Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants. Things which must shortly come to pass. To show unto his servants, meaning to Israel, because when you read the Bible, it's talking to Israel alone, which is so called blacks and Hispanics. What's your nationality? That's your nationality? What country? Are you from? Dominican Republic, right? So you're from the tribe of Simeon. I myself as well am from the tribe of Simeon. That brother's from the tribe of Simeon. See it? Simeon? Right? That's your that's your true heritage, your true nationality, all right? We are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. That's what we are here to teach our people. So now I'm going to continue with the revelation of Jesus Christ, and then I'm going to go into the nationality. Verse 14, his head and his hairs were white like wool. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So now it's telling you two things about his head and his hair. It's white and it's like wool. Now, you were talking about this um, this picture right here. You believe that Christ looks like this, right? Because you said you're taking the slave. So now you're equating 
slavery with being black, alright? Which is it's not altogether false. But now I'm showing the description, alright? His head and his hairs were white like wool. Does this man who has been shown throughout the whole world have white woolly hair? No. So that's strike one against this image, right? That's a lie. Exactly. Really. As white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. This guy, when you see him, they always show him with baby blue eyes. Alright? It says Christ's eyes were what? Were red as a flame of fire. It says red as a flame of fire. Why? Because when you read Genesis 49, it says Christ, he drank, he drank wine in yeah. moderation. When you drink wine, your eyes get bloodshot. So it's, it's Christ's eyes were bloodshot. So that's strike two against this image right here. Verse 15, and his feet like unto fine brass. And his feet like unto fine brass. Now what color is brass? Brass is a derivative of brown. So now if Christ's feet were, was like unto fine brass, meaning brown, what color is the rest of his body? Same color, Same color right? All right. That's why I believe that that image. That yeah, but now you got proof. Now you have proof. As if they burned in a furnace. So now it's saying as if they burned in a furnace. So not only was his his, his feet uh, like unto fine brass, meaning brown, it's as if it burned in a furnace. So when you burn anything in a furnace, what color does it turn? It turns black, like real dark. Anything. You can burn paper, you can burn wood. It turns black, right? So Christ is a black man, according to the scripture, according to the Bible. That's so now you have the proof, brother. That's the lie that I was talking about. The lie about the image of Christ. Where is that lie in the Bible, though? That, no, I'm talking about the image. The image I'm seeing here, this Yeah, one. that's the image of the that's, beast. That's the image that was given to us. Right? That's Both the image that was given to us in slavery. In slavery, exactly. Right. Now, in order to maintain that slavery, in this situation, the Son of God comes in. They're gonna know like, okay, so that being black is not generally mean that they come from the same So if people were to believe that people would be black, then slavery would end that. That's not why. That's not why slavery started, and that's not how slavery was going to end. Right? The way slavery started because we broke God's law. You understand? The so-called blacks and Hispanics. We went into captivity, slavery, for breaking God's law. Alright? Uh, uh, huh? I'm going to show you. Uh, Alright. You want to know what laws did we break? You see that? What you have on your arm? On your arm. Your other arm. What do you have on your arm? Tattoo. You know that's a law that you have broken? Let's get that law. The book of Leviticus. So you said what laws did we break from going into captivity? Let me do it on the twenty eighth. So you can understand. And you see what else is on your on your wrist right there? What do you have on your wrist? The cross. Nope. And who? What Jesus? So you came over here, you say that you believe Christ is black. So why would you have the white image of Caesar Borgias who was the devil that walked this earth, right? Why would you have him on your wrist as Jesus Christ? This scripture comes out, bro. I want to see how you're going to react. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 18. What profit is the graven image. It says, this is God speaking, you hear me? What profit is the graven image? You know what's a graven image? Something that's molded, something that's created. Just like that, that cross and the images on your wrist, that was created. It says, what profit is the graven image? What does it profit you to have it? That the maker thereof hath graven it, the molten image, and a teacher of lies. What is that graven image? A teacher of lies. No, it tells you the truth. It tells you the true image of Christ. A teacher of lies. Bro, that's a teacher of lies. 
That what you have on your wrist is perpetuating slavery. It's perpetuating lies. You understand that? So you need to remove that, brother. That, that's, that's, that's idolatry. Continue reading. That the maker of his work trusted therein to make dumb idols. You see that? It's a dumb idol. All right? It's a dumb idol. People worship this image like this is the true Jesus Christ. And you're helping to perpetuate that. You believe in that. That's why you have it on your wrist. So I don't understand how you could believe that Christ is black, but at the same time have that on your wrist. Which one is it, brother? So remove that. That's idolatry. You want to know why we went into slavery for worshiping idols. Is, is one reason we went into slavery. Another reason is for having tattoos. You understand? So why do you still... I'm waiting. The scripture of God, the word of God just came out against what you have on your wrist and you still have it on your wrist. But you still take that. God is unconditional love. God is not punishment. Oh yeah? God is, God is unconditional love. God is unconditional love. So that means you're, you're, you're better than God. No, no, no. Hell no. Because you never hate, don't I, you? Never did I mention that I am listen, better than listen. God. Listen, listen. You're not listening to me. You say, you, you say God is unconditional love. Yeah. That's one, one emotion. All right? Don't we have more than one emotion? Yeah, but why? All right. We were created in the image of God. God has more than one emotion. You're making God lesser than what he is. You're studying God as a human form. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. You listen. Said, listen. Listen to what you're saying. You said humans have the God is the human form. Therefore, let's go. The book so of you Deuteronomy. Say God is unconditional love. And I told you to prove all things, right? Now, listen. You cannot prove that. But I'm going to prove to you I that he's more than just love. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 39. See now that I, even I am he. And there is no God with me. There's no other God besides the God of Israel. All right? Read. I kill. What does God do? I kill. No, God is unconditional love. I kill. God kills. And I make a lie. And God makes a lie. I wound. He wounds. And I heal. And he heals. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. There's nobody that can deliver you out of the hands of God. God is not just unconditional love. That is a lie that you learned in Christianity. That is a lie that you learned in the church. Alright? The church is the nation of Israel. That's first and foremost. It is not a building. All right? You learned lies. That's why you have that lie on your wrist. Brother, talking about some second hand. Brother, I'm reading the Bible. I'm not what it's not coming out of my mouth. Give me that first Peter's four and eleven. Reading something that could have been first Peter's four and eleven. This brother has spirits on him, he don't want to learn. Brother, you came in here, you said you had a question. I still haven't heard the question. Read. The question you is the other scripture, right? This, yeah, this is the question. This is the question. You're going to hear this first. I'm How you. can you trust truth in that if you were not there and witnessed the writing of it? Go, brother. First Peter. <coughs> the book of First Peter. Turn the floor away and verse 11. I asked the question you did not answer. I'm here. I asked no, ask the question you did not answer. How can you trust and believe so hard, the words that come out of that Bible, if your eyes are not there, you're going to be alright. Huh? Let's get it. 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 let us get it Say, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Read that again. Verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Say, my counsel shall stand. So God's counsel shall stand. It was prophesied that we're going to go into slavery, into captivity. All right. The way we believe, the reason why we believe is because when we read these, these books in, in the Bible, it tells about our history, how we went into slavery. You have to be able to discern 
when, when God is talking about you and your people. You understand that? Give me Deuteronomy 20 and 15. Let me see if you see yourself in these scriptures. This is how you believe. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So God is saying, if, if you don't listen to his words, if you don't do the words that are written in his life, right, all these curses, it's a bad thing, right? So there goes again your unconditional love. God is cursing his people for breaking his law. All right? Read that. Give me 68. Are you saying, how do we believe the words that's in this Bible? This is how we believe the words that's in this Bible. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. How many times did the nation of Israel go into Egypt, into captivity? You don't know? All right. Once. Once physically, right? But it's saying we're going to go into Egypt again with, with what? With ships. With ships. Now, if you know anything about geography, you know that Egypt and Israel is not separated by water. You don't need a ship to go into Egypt. So, now, I'm going to read you. they're talking about some, some um, natural event that's going to happen, right? No, he's not talking about a natural event. Pay attention. No, 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 wait. I'm, I'm talking about the... You said that Israel and Egypt are not separated by ocean, right? Right. So yeah. you don't need a ship to go into slavery into Egypt. But now it's talking about that people are going to go into Egypt. Again. Again. With ships. ships. Right. So what should that tell you? That tells you that it's going to be before they go into Egypt. A natural event is going to happen. It's separated by ships. No. You create anything, bro. Listen. You got you to gotta know history and you got to know how to break down this Bible. Give me Exodus 20. Pay okay, attention. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So God brought the nation of Israel, which is the so-called blacks and Hispanics, out of the land of Egypt. That was the first time, right, with Moses, with Moses. He brought us out of slavery. Now with you. Now with Deuteronomy 20 and 68, it says we're going into slavery again with ships. Now, what people do you know when it's a slavery with ships? So-called blacks. Also, you so-called Hispanics. But you don't know that because they don't teach you that. Well, that's how you believe this Bible. Why? Because when you read it, you see our history in the Bible. It prophesied that we were going into slavery with ships. And that did happen. That's how you know. That's how you know this Bible is a true book. You understand that? It's talking about the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. When Columbus discovered America, who was the first people he met? Where? No, brother. The land island called Hispaniola, which is now called Dominican Republic. This is your history. You're supposed to know this. You understand that? Now, you see, Columbus went to went to um Dominican Republic, right? And what did he do? He took he took native captives and he brought them back to Portugal. He brought them back to Spain in ships in slavery. They didn't go off their own free will. They didn't go because Columbus was a good person. You understand that? So that prophecy fits your people. This is how we believe this Bible. This is how you should believe this Bible. So now, when I talked about the graven image, immediately you should have took that off. You're supposed to believe the words in this Bible, brother. This is a true book. All right? This is not a game. This is not just something we do out here for fun. All right? We are here to wake our people up. Why? Because we're in idolatry. All right? We're in the... Huh? When you worship a false image, idol. You understand that? No, I heard something. Bro, you still got the devil on your wrist. I don't understand that. I just showed you, I proved to you, because you said you believe Christ is black. I showed you in the Bible where Christ is black, and you still got the image of the beast on your wrist. Give me Revelation 13, verse 11. You still got the image of the beast, bro. You, 
You worship that beast? You believe in that beast? Huh? I'm not. I'm not talking about your actions do um occur with what you believe in because you have that your action telling me that you believe in that beast. All right. So why do you have it on your wrist, brother? Bro, if you don't believe in the beast, why do you have it on your wrist? Do you that we die? Why do you have it on your wrist? Do you believe that we die? Just kidding. Revelation 13 and 11. This brother prepped the beast. In the book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 11. true God. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. And he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. It's talking about America. He exercised all the power of the first beast, which is Rome, all right? Rome. Rome. America is an extension of Rome. Three. And causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast. What does America do? And them which dwell in the earth to worship the first beast. It causes them. America had that power to cause them that dwell on the earth, meaning you and people like you, to what? To worship the first beast. To worship the first beast, meaning the so-called white man. When you got that on your wrist, you're worshiping the white man. Read. How many beasts? Oh, stay with me. Stop Verse 13. Me. And he doeth great wonders, so that he make the fire come down from heaven. And the so-called white man does great wonders, so that he makes fire come down from heaven. What is that talking about? That's talking about the atomic bomb, right? Who had that power first? America, right? So read it again so that you understand. And he doeth great wonders. That's a great wonder that he did in the earth. Read. So that he make it fire come down from heaven. He made fire come down from heaven. On the earth. On the earth. No one had ever seen that until America brought out the atomic bomb and dropped it on the so-called... Japanese on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. All right, that was the fire that came down from the heaven onto the earth. That's the power that the white man had. Read in the sight of men. In the sight of men, all the earth saw that and they said, "Wow, this man has the power." Read and deceived them that dwell on the earth. And deceived them. How did he deceive them that dwell on the earth? By having you think that Jesus Christ is a white man. By having you think that God is white. Read. By the means of those miracles. By the means of those miracles. Because people thought, wow, if he has the power to do that, he must be God. Right? By painting these white images everywhere, he's saying he must be God. Read. Which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. He had power to do those things in the sight of the beast. Read. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. That they should make what? An image to the beast. An image to the beast. An image to the beast. Not to Jesus Christ, not to God, the beast. So you're worshiping the beast. You're perpetuating that image. You're making that your God. You understand that? You understand that, brother? Okay, read. Which had the wound by a sword and did live. He had a wound by a sword. Why? Because Rome fell, right? <laughs> what, what was it that fell? Oh, oh, he fell? Oh, you know what I just thought? 193 about? AD on the severest September, he was an Israelite. All right, that's when Rome fell. It had, it had a wound by a sword, but did live. How did it live? Great Britain to America, all right? And the people are still here. All right, read. Verse 15. The, the time for you to talk is past, but now it's time for you to learn. You didn't know That's who the image right. of the beast was. Now you do. All right, you took it off, but you're still holding on to it. So I'm hoping to bring you over with the scripture, with the word of the Most High. All right, because you haven't been taught this in the church. You haven't been taught this at home. You haven't been taught this at school. All right, this is this is in the Bible, brother. Verse 15. Unto the image of the beast. And he had power. The white man had power to give life unto the image that's, of the beast. Coming. How did he give life to the image of the beast? Leonardo da Vinci. You see that? He's the first one who drew this image of the beast. He took the second son of Pope Alexander, the sixth of Rome, the 
and he used them as a model for the new Christ, right. the image of the beast. All right. All right. All right. Read that again. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. The so-called white man had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Now I'm showing you how he gave life. All right. The so-called white man came into power in the 1400s. Right. Now, Leonardo da Vinci was commissioned by um, the second um, son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. His name was Caesar Borgias. He commissioned Leonardo da Vinci to paint him as the new Christ. You understand? Yes, exactly. All right? That's the son of Pope son. That's the son of Caesar Borgias. That's the second, that's the Pope Alexander VI of Rome. All right, he was commissioned. Leonardo da Vinci was commissioned by that family, the Borgias. I don't know if you have cable. There's a show called the Borgias where it talks about them, like right? their history. They were an evil family. What they did is they had the power to change the image of Christ to the so-called white man. And had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. See that? Read that again. And had power to give life unto the image of the beast. And had power to give life. Now the first power they had to give life was by paintings. Now how do they give life to the image of the beast? Let's see if you would agree. Huh? Now how do, how do they give life to the image? What's, what's another form of image? No, what's another form of images? That movies, all right. What movie came out? The Son of God. And what was that? That was the power that the, that was given to the beast. What to give that image life? That's how they give that image life. So now people see that image of Caesar Borgia as, as, as the Christ, and they think that that's Christ. All right. That's the power that was in it, given into their hands. That was what Good, because that's a it's all lie. You want to know the life of Christ? Read the Bible, brother. Read the Bible. That's how you learn the life of Christ. Because now you you said you believe he was black, but now you know he's black. Huh? Oh, read the um, the King James Version, so the original King James Version. That's the version that was com he he commissioned. How many? 70, 70 um, forty-seven. 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 What? Um, Scholars, right, to, um, to break down the Greek, the Latin, and the Hebrew into English. All right, after those, after this original um, King James Version, there came other versions that try to water it down, try to change the Bible. But you what? You know what? Acts 8, 30 and 31. Acts 8? Yeah, he's about to leave. You ain't leaving just here, right? Reading it. Right. He's not leaving. But bring that out. All right. Bring he, has, it out. he had issues with the book and this shit. This is what? Book of Acts. Chapter 8. <clears throat> the book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 30. And Philip ran tither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah. So Philip heard, uh, maybe he heard, he heard Nathaniel, was going to say, reading the scriptures. He was reading the book of Isaiah. All right, read. Understandest what thou readest. And said, Understandest what thou readest. And Philip ran tether to him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest what thou readest. And he asked him, Understandest what thou readest? You have to have understanding of what you're reading. Read. And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? So how are you going to get the understanding? Read it again. And he said, How can I? Except some man should guide me. So how do you get the understanding of the Bible? According to that scripture? The guidance of some man. So that's what we're here to do. We're here to guide you to the true understanding of these scriptures. Alright? Like I said before, the churches are lying to you. The school system is lying to you. Alright? You're not going to learn the truth on TV. You're not going to learn the truth um, by, by, by the, um, your, your oppressors. 
They're only going to perpetuate the lie. That's why you're still walking around with that image of the beast on your wrist. But Lord's will, after today, you're going to throw that thing out. Matter of fact, throw it out now. You don't need that thing. That's your all right? But uh, the question is, knowing that there's so much lies out there, how do you know if it doesn't go according to the scripture, that's how you do it. Alright? Psalms 111 verse 10. Brother asked a good question. He said, how do you know the truth according to the Bible? Alright, so now we're going to show you, brother. These are steps. These are steps that you have to take in order to understand the Bible. It says, how can I accept some man should guide you? So we're going to guide you into, into the understanding of the Bible. Yes, sir. The book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The beginning of wisdom. Read. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. A good understanding of the Bible have all they that do his commandments. How do you get, a, how do you get the understanding? Read that last part again. A good understanding of all they that do his commandments. You didn't get it? In order to understand this Bible, you have to be keeping the commandments. You understand that? That's how you get the understanding. You understand? It's more than Ten Commandments, alright? There's no tattoos in the Ten Commandments, but it's a commandment from God. That you're breaking. This is why you don't get to understand why, right? because you break God's laws. When you break God's laws, right? Let's get sin first and then get the law of the The book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. So sin is a transgression of the law, meaning the breaking of God's laws. And it's more than just ten laws, it's more than just ten commandments. All right, so read that again. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. So when you're sinning, you're breaking God's laws. So this right here, the tattoo is a sin. You're breaking God's law. So now we're going to show you the understanding of that law. So Lord's will, you repent from that and don't get any more tattoos. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 27, 28. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. Now, when you get a tattoo, what is that needle doing? It's cutting into your flesh, piercing it, and getting that ink inside your, underneath your skin. So you're making cuttings in your flesh. It says, for the dead. Why? Because back then, the people used to get markings. All right? They would follow the customs of the heathen. The Egyptians would do that. They would, they would carve their face, carve their bodies. Why? For the dead, the dead of their families. And we took that custom. Why? Because during this time, when Moses gave us his law, we were just fresh out of Egypt. So we had to forget all those things. All right? We had to renew our minds. We no print, exactly. no print any marks upon you. Now it's getting clear. It says, no print any marks upon you. Printing is writing. All right, you got GPL on your arm. You're printing something on your arm. You got, what's that, fish? So you print, you printed a fish. So you're going against God's law. Read it again. He shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. Nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Now, if you're in sin, if you're breaking God's laws, according to Psalms 111 and 10, are you going to get the understanding? You have to repent from those things. And that's why I'm telling you, all praise that the, to the most high you threw out that idol, and now the law of the tattoo, Lord's will, you repent from that. All right? This is, these are dead steps to repent from. Let's get repent. You got it? Next five, three. Book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 31. He hath 
have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel. So now, repentance is for who? For Israel. So now, repentance is for Israel. See, the Lord God is saying God is unconditional love. God is, is for everybody, right? He's saying basically, but God doesn't love everybody, right? God only loves his people. When you were walking by, I don't know if you caught it earlier, I was showing how we're God's chosen people. Let's go back to that. So now we're saying Christ came, he died on the cross to give repentance to us, all right? Meaning a chance for us to redeem, to, to um, reform ourselves, all right? Like you said, um, what was the word you used? Start over. So now we have to start over. Not as Dominicans, not as Puerto Ricans, not as blacks, not as Hispanics, but as Israelites. You understand that? Because repentance is for Israel. And now Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 to 68 shows all the curses that fit our people. I showed you one curse so that you understand why we believe this Bible. That's a major curse that happened to our people. We went into slavery in the ships. So that's how you know that the Israelites are the so-called blacks and Hispanics. Because did the so-called white men go into slavery in the ships? No, right? Yeah, there's, no, there's no proof of that in history whatsoever. Exactly. That's how you know the Bible is too book. This book was written thousands of years ago and it's still true today. The first is fit our people. That's how we know who we are. That's why we believe in this Bible. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art a holy people. What did God say? For thou art a holy people. God says we're a holy people. But do we act like it? No. We want to include ourselves with everyone else. We want to follow the customs of the people. If you want to have the faint image of Christ on our wrist, you want to get tattoos, you want to have our women in pants, all these things go against God's law. That's right. This is why we're still in the condition that we're in. This is why you have in Ferguson young black men being shot in cold blood and nothing gets done about it. Why? Because we're under the curses. We'll get into that too. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. We're a holy people. Holy meaning sanctified, separate. Understand? Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people. No, equal to everybody. Above all people. What does the Bible say? Above all people. Israelites are what? Above all people. The so-called blacks and Hispanics are what? Above all people. Above all people. That includes the so-called white man, that includes the Arab man, that includes the so-called Chinese, the so-called Japanese, everybody, bro. We above everybody. They're a special people. But we, it's time for us to act like this. You understand? Exactly. Brother, you're in, you're in the spirit now. Because I just read that. It's time for us to wake up. Wake up out of what? The delusion, exactly. I like, now you're in the spirit, brother. The delusion of inclusion. Meaning, thinking that we're equal to everybody. We're not. Bro. We're above all people. You understand? We're a special people. Give me Leviticus 26, 14. You know, you're aware of what's going on in Ferguson? In Ferguson, Missouri? St. Louis, Missouri. You don't know what happened? Michael Brown? The young man that was shot? You're aware of that, right? You know that people are protesting, right? But that's prophecy in the Bible that that, that, that was going to happen to us. You asked the question earlier, how do we believe this Bible? Because when we read the scriptures, the prophecies, and we see it before our eyes happening, you know this is a true book. You know we're the people of the Bible. You know that we are God's chosen people. And the reason why these things are happening is because we're breaking God's law. All that Now you might ask yourself, if we're God's chosen people, why does he allow these things to happen to us? Why does he allow the so-called white man to oppress us? Why are we in the conditions that we're in? I'm going to show you. Exactly, I'm going to prove it to you. Remember, prove all things. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 50 and verse 7. All that found them have devoured them. 
all that found the Israelites have what? Have devoured them. Have devoured them, meaning destroyed them, conquered them, all right? Enslaved them. Why? And their adversaries said, we offend not. Their adversaries, meaning those who are against God, against they, die, they, people, they said, we don't offend who? We offend not. Because they have sinned against the Lord. I read it again. Exactly. They devour us. They kill us. They destroy us. And they say they don't offend not. They don't offend God. Why? Because we have sinned against God. So God is allowing these things to happen. Read. All that have found them have devoured them. But the white man, he understands these scriptures. Too, all right, as I said, they, they accomplished another part of the Bible says they accomplished a diligent search, meaning they study, they understand this Bible more than our people, all right. And their adversaries said, We offend not because they have sinned against the Lord. So they feel that they can do whatever they want to us because we have sinned against God, and God will not defend a people continue to break his law. Now I'm going to show you the Ferguson situation in the Bible. All right? this, this book was written thousands of years ago. But that's how you know it's a true book. That's how you believe this Bible. Because when the prophecies are being fulfilled before your eyes, it's time for you to wake up. It's time to, for you to believe. All right? Read. Read 26, 14. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26 and verse 14. Start at 13. Verse 13, I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt. So what God is this? The God of Israel, who brought us out of the land of Israel. All right, read. That ye should not be their bondmen. And we, I, we're not supposed to be bondmen. What's another word for bondmen? Slaves. We're not supposed to be the slaves of the other nations. So read why we are in that condition. Because you have to wake up. I don't know if you work. You work? Do you work? You go to school? Okay, you're a student. But you see how people, how they have to work to make ends meet? They're not working for themselves. They're working for their oppressor. The so-called white man. He gives you just enough so that you can get on the bus and go back to work. He gives you just enough to sustain yourself so that you can continue to work for him. He don't give you enough so that you can do for yourself. All right? He's not going to do that. Exactly. He's going to keep you oppressed. How does he oppress you? By calling you black, by calling you Hispanic, all right? By not telling you that you're God's chosen people. He has you with low self-esteem. He has it so that you perpetuate your own slavery. Understand me? And I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. So God is causing us to go upright. That's why you see us here today, upright, teaching God's commandments teaching our people who they are, right? He's broken our bonds, our mental bonds, because our people are still mentally in captivity. Right? You didn't know you were an Israelite. Exactly. You're perpetuating your own slavery. Exactly. So now you do, brother. Continue to learn. Continue to learn. Take that flight that I gave you. Study it. Go online. Online we have website, IsraelUnite.org, it's all on there, brother. Don't let this day pass you by, forget about it. Continue to study, continue to find out who you are. Who is the question? for you to wake up bro it's time for you to know your true nationality it's time for you to start keeping god's commandments why because like i'm reading god's prophecies are being fulfilled 
Our men are being killed in the streets like dogs. And there's no power in us. Why? Because we're still breaking God's laws. So until we can, until we start keeping God's laws, we're going to continue to be oppressed. All right. So that's the reason why God had you listen. Don't lose what I had you hold. All right. The Book of Proverbs, chapter twenty and verse twenty-four. Now you said, why do you think God had you walk by the king? Man's goings are of the Lord. Man's goings means the reason why you walk this way is of God. You understand? How can a man then understand his own way? How can a man then understand his own way? You don't understand your way. Your way is God's way. God had you stand here and hear this word. God had you walk by and hear this word today. You don't understand that. Read, read it again. No, not the words. I'm talking about what God Oh, I don't understand exactly. Read that again. Read that again. So I'm walking in this path without understanding. Exactly. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? How can a man then understand? You have you ask yourself, how did it, how is it possible that was that God made it straight for me to stand here and hear his word? Because it's of God. No other reason. Of God he had to hear his word. And it's a blessing that he had to hear his word. Now you know the words are true, and what do you have to do with that? You have to wake in your mind, repent, reform yourself. No, I don't need that no more. You understand? Hold that. Hold on. See you 14 and 6. Alright? Now you have to repent from your ways. You didn't know unknowingly. But now you know, so now you can't, can't continue. Exactly, you have to repent. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 14 and verse 6. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God. So that's what we're out here to do. Saying to the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God. These are God's words. Read. Repent and turn yourselves from your idols. Repent and turn yourselves from your idols. That idol that you always turned yourself from that. You repented from that. All praises to the Most High. All right? Read. And turn away your faces from all your abominations. And turn away your faces from all your abominations. All right? That image of the beast is an abomination. All right? Only yourself Dominican when your God's chosen people is an abomination. So now you have to learn, study this Bible, study your history, so that you can teach your people, perpetuate the truth instead of the lie. You understand? So that people, so that your people, the so-called blacks and Hispanics, are not under that delusion that you were once. Because now your eyes are awake. Now you know who you are. You understand? Now it becomes a big responsibility with that. You have to repent and continue to show. You have to, the, the same thing that you've been taught, you have to teach your people. Now go back to Leviticus. Exactly. All praises to the whole time. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26 and verse 14. But if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments, and if you shall despise my statutes. So if you will despise God's statutes, His laws, statutes, and commandments. If you hate to do His commandments, read. Or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant. You break the covenant that God made with His people Israel when you break in His law. Read. I also will do this unto you. So God is telling you what he's going to do to you if you break his laws and you hate his laws. Let's see if this fits what happened last week with uh, Mike Brown and the first degree. I will even appoint over you terror. I will even appoint over you terror. Terror meaning fear, okay? Our people fear when the so-called white man is, is coming, all right? Why? Because the Most High appointed that terror over us. Alright? There's another scripture that says, He is not a terror unto good works. He 
meaning if you're in God's laws, if you're keeping his laws, the white man is not going to, he's not going to put that fear on you. You're not going to have that fear of the white man. Why? Because when you're in the spirit, when you're keeping God's laws, there's nothing that any nation can do against you. Read. Consumption. Consumption meaning devour your people. All right? Our people are being destroyed. How? Through, through um, rap music, through abortions. All right, through the lies in, in, in the school system, drugs in the community, prostitution, all right, murder, gangs, all that is a design to devour us, to destroy us as a people. Read. And the burning acute. The burning acute meaning what? Like syphilis, gonorrhea, all these things are burnings that the Most High has put on our people. Why? Because we broke God's law. Read. That shall consume the eyes. That shall consume the eyes. Read. And cause sorrow of heart. And cause sorrow of heart. How people are sorrow of heart. Why? Because all these things are happening to us and we don't know why. Because we don't look to the Bible for the answer. We look for the white man. We look for CNN, Fox News. We look elsewhere. We look elsewhere, exactly, except for where we are in this Bible. Read. And ye shall sow your seed in vain. Ye shall sow your seed in vain. You know, you understand what that means? Sow your seed in vain. You're going to have your children for nothing. Why? Let's see. For your enemies shall eat it. No, your friends. Your enemies shall eat it. Your enemies shall eat your, your children. Now, is that talking about literally eating them? No, it's talking about killing them in the street. All right, we're throwing them in prison, which is happening. That's why you know this prophecy is true. That's how you know who we are, because this prophecy is happening to us. It's not happening to no other people. It's not happening to no other races. Exactly, the so-called blacks and Hispanics and the Native Americans. Verse 17, and I will set my face against you. And I will set my face against you, meaning God is allowing these things to happen. Why? And ye shall be slain. Before your enemies. And ye shall be slain before your enemy. Was not Mike Brown slain before his enemy? Before the so-called white man who stood over him? Shot him in his head four times? Looked again, made sure he was dead and shot him four more times? That's being slain before your enemy. For what? For breaking God's laws. They that hate you shall reign over you. They that hate you shall reign over you. Meaning... They are over us, meaning they govern us, all right? That's what you've seen, all right? And there's no might in our hands. And ye shall flee when none pursueth you. And ye shall flee when nobody is chasing you. That's why I said the white man has set up mental slavery in our heads, but we perpetuate our own oppression, all right? We'll see a white man and we'll be scared, more scared of him than we are of our own people. You understand? We, we're more scared of the white man than we are of God. We're more scared of the so-called white man than we are of God's laws. That's why our people still break God's laws. Because they have no fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You understand that? So you have to have that fear. God is allowing all these things to happen so that you fear Him. So that you know He's a true God. You understand? And He's not playing with none of us. It's going to continue to happen until we repent, change our ways, all right? Read. Verse 18, and if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. See that? If after all these things happening, Mike Brown, what's the other brother? Um, Trayvon Martin, Garner. All right, there's a whole bunch of brothers that's being put to death, and it's happening in rapid succession. Even if after all these things happening, and you still don't repent, what is God going to do? I will punish you seven times more. God is going to punish us seven times more for what? For your sins. For your sins. What is your sins? To transgress God's laws. All right. So you have to repent, brother, as an Israelite. Not as a Dominican, as an Israelite of the tribe of Simeon. We're God's chosen people. Alright? Brother, 
by being a part of this and studying that, that flyer. Open that flyer up. I'm going to show you how you're going to be a part of it. ask, how can he be a part of it? See that? Israelunite.org, that's where you find us. You study this pamphlet like I told you. And you go with the scriptures. Don't take my word for it. If it doesn't make sense according to the scripture, it's, it's not true. This Bible is your history, all right? You're going to go to this website and it's going to break down more of who you are, all right? And the way you become a part of this is you, you keep God's laws. You teach your people who they are. We have classes online. You go to IsraelNight.org. We have classes um, three times a day, all right? Seven days a week, all right? And once you get yourself in order, once you start repenting, changing your ways, all right, you can come up, you can come on the Sabbath, you can come and listen to us here. You, you live around here? Bro, you can come. We're here every Saturday from 12 to 4. And we have Sabbath service. Um, after after this, we break down and we go to the school. We have a school on Burke Avenue. All right, you're more than welcome to come. All right, we have Burke Avenue. It's on there too. Oh. 3049 Paulden Avenue. Entrance is at Burke. You take the two trains to Burke Avenue. All right, you're more than welcome to come today if you want. Definitely come. All right, what's your name, brother? Dennis. Uh, Dennis. Yeah. We're gonna be looking for you. At what time? Um, you, guys start? you can come around 5:30. 5:30. Yeah. Yeah. Bring a state ID. Well, what ID do you have? Passport. Passport. Bring that. That's state or government. That's good. That's good. That's, good. That's a passport. Bring that. And bring a uh, uh, pen and paper and bring your Bible. You have a Bible? Bring that, brother. We look forward to I'm Eldon Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.